Okay, I want to do a quick video uh, explaining how you can install Cura, which is a 3D printer slicing um, slicing software, also called a slicer, um, on your Chromebooks. Okay, um, so I just did a Google search and found uh, said a Google search for install Cura on a Chromebook, and the first hit was this uh, Ultimaker community forum. And uh, we have these instructions here, which I've done and they work. So um, I'm just going to walk, walk through them. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the Cura app image. All right. So we'll go over here and I'm going to say Cura app image download. Let's see what we get here. So there's this GitHub one and there's also this Ultimaker um, is this Ultimaker link. So let's go to this Ultimaker link. I'd like to get it from the straight from the source. All right, so Ultimaker Cura 4.61, download for free. And here is where it's going to ask us to choose our operating system. And what we're actually going to choose is Linux 64 bit. So we'll select Linux, little penguin icon. We'll click download now. The download will start. I've got a nice fast internet connection so that's good all right we'll go back to we'll go back to our instructions okay we've downloaded the cura app image and um, we're going to run a, a chmod operation on that app image okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a linux terminal and um, uh, move the app image into a folder where we can use it. So that'll, that'll be the first thing. So I'm going to hop over to my files. All right, so this is a little files app. And the files app basically, you know, is just to uh, let you navigate the files on your computer. And basically there's my files, which shows everything. And then there's this downloads folder. And in the downloads folder, here is my Ultimaker app image. Um, so in order to run this on Linux, what we've got to do is open up a terminal. Okay, I'm going to leave this, leave this over here on the side. I'm going to go down to this uh, launcher menu down here on the bottom left. And I'll click, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to search for terminal, and it'll fill in like that, and it'll give me this terminal that I can launch. And it's going to say set up Linux beta on your Chromebook. Um, so basically, the way this works is your Chromebook runs an operating system called Chrome OS, and it's uh, made by Google, and it's a very lightweight operating system for running on uh, low-power computers. Uh, Linux is a whole separate operating system, although Chrome OS is based somewhat on Linux, and uh, it can run on all kinds of computers. Android phones run Linux. A lot of web browsers run Linux. Um, it's an open source and free uh, operating system, which is great. Um, and if you learn it, it's a very marketable skill to learn Linux. Uh, so if that's something, if this is all something you're interested in, let me know. I can get you some more resources. Um, so we'll hit next. Um, for my username, I'm going to stick with G Buckland. You can pick a username that you'd like. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change. I'm going to change this to Greg. To install. Okay. So it'll take a minute, um, and I'll probably speed this up. Uh, in post, so you don't have to watch this whole thing happen. So, once you're that took about ten minutes. So, uh, you know, just go get a go get a drink or do whatever you want to do. Do something else. Um, so it took about 10 minutes to install the, uh, the Linux system on your Chrome. And so now what we have here, um, this is called a terminal, um, and it's what's known as a command line interface. So I can type in here and it will, um, it's a, it's another way of interacting with the computer. It's a little bit of a lower level way of interacting with the computer. So, and this thing here, this is Greg at Penguin. So Penguin is the computer and Greg is the username. So it's saying Greg at Penguin. This is like where email addresses come from originally. Um, so here's my, here's my Greg at Penguin. 
and this is called my command prompt. So I can type commands. So for example, if I type ls, it'll list all the folders, uh, folders and files in my current working directory. I don't have anything here, so let's just take a look. If I do pwd, that's gonna get print working directory. And so slash means uh, a folder, and if, if it's the slash at the beginning, that means it's root. So then in the home folder, and then in a folder called Greg, and then there's nothing. So um, let's take a look here. We're gonna pop over to our files again. We'll hop over here. And now you'll see under my files, there's this new folder called Linux files. So here's my Linux files. Now there's nothing, there's nothing in there yet, but that's fine. So if we go over to downloads and we get, grab our Ultimaker Cura uh, app image, we can drag it over to Linux files and drop it. And it might take a second, but it'll copy. And it's important to note that you are actually copying files. So when you move files between your downloads folder and your Linux files folder, um, it will make a copy. It doesn't move it. So you can see here's the one that's in my downloads folder, and here's the one that's in my Linux files folder. All right. And now if I go over here, I can do ls, and there's there's my uh, Ultimaker Cura 4.61 dot app image. Okay. Now what an app image is, is uh, like an, ex it's like an executable file. And uh, if I were to just try to run it right now, I don't think it would run. So what we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to follow these directions back here. Um, first, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it something uh, a little bit, a little bit shorter and a little bit simpler. And I'll do that over here just because it's a little easier. There's ways to do that in the terminal, but I'm just going to call it Cura. 4.4.61. Okay, let's shorten it a little bit. I'm going to leave the .app image uh, file extension so that I always remember that that's what it is. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, change permissions so that this can be executable. Okay. And this is important that you type it in exactly uh, exactly how it comes up on my screen. Um, and uh, don't put any other letters or spaces or anything like that, okay? So I'm gonna type in C-H-M-O-D. And that stands, that's uh, for a change mod, uh, as in like change change and modify the read and write positions, uh, uh, permissions of the file. Do a space, and I'm gonna do A, and then plus, which is shift, shift equals, does the plus, X, okay? So those are the permissions that I'm setting, all right? And uh, then I'm gonna type in the name of the file. Now I've changed it, it's not Ultimaker Cura anymore, it's now Cura, so if I do C, U, and now here's the handy thing, if I hit tab, it will auto-complete the rest of the thing, uh, the rest of the file name. So you just have to do the C, U. Now it is, case sensitive, all of this is case sensitive. So you'll notice I did an uppercase C. If I did a lowercase C, it wouldn't work. So chmod space a plus x space cura 4.6.1 dot app, app image and I'll hit return. Okay, and then nothing, nothing comes up, which means it didn't show any errors, which means uh, that it probably worked. All right, and now we're actually gonna run cura. Okay, and the way that you run something, uh, that you run an executable file in Linux is you do dot slash, Okay, and that tells the terminal that I want to execute this file. Um, and then I'm going to do Cura. And again, I just typed in CU and then hit tab and it filled in um, it filled in the rest. And we'll hit enter and it should load up. And like uh, installing Linux, uh, this may take a while and it especially may take a while to load Cura when you first uh, when you first load it, when you first run it, um, and that's okay. Just be patient with it. Uh, your Chromebook is a little bit underpowered for this. Once you've run it once or twice, um, it'll it'll load a little faster. And also, um, once uh, it once you've opened it once, you can actually just leave it open. And unless you need to shut your computer down for some reason, um, it'll be open in the background, and you can use it. Um, and we'll use it a bunch. So again, I'll uh, I'll cut through this quick in post. Here it goes, it's starting to load.
Okay, so now I've got Cura running. And as I said, uh, that took that took a little while. That took probably five minutes. Um, again, feel free to do something else while that loads. Um, I don't think it'll take quite that long uh, the next time you run it. Um, I think that's a first time thing. So welcome to Ultimaker Cura. We're gonna click get started. Uh, the disclaimer is fine, you can agree. All right, this just tells you what's new in all the latest versions. Click Next. All right, uh, this is saying that uh, it's going to send some information to Ultimaker about um, about the kinds of print settings that you use. That should be fine. Okay, and here it's going to ask us to add a printer. And uh, we are going to add a non-networked printer. In other words, a printer that's not hooked up to, uh, to like a Wi-Fi network. And um, it's not an Ultimaker, so I'm going to close. Well, let me close this. Oh, let me close it. That's fine. Uh, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to find uh, the make of our 3D printer, which is Creality 3D. And you see there's just dozens and dozens of uh, different brands. Uh, our brand or make is Creality 3D. So if I click the little arrow, it'll show me a bunch of Creality printers. And we're going to go down and select Creality Ender 3. Make sure you get the 3, and you don't want the 3 Pro or the 2 or any of the other ones, make sure that it's the 3 because this is going to set the printer profile um, for your slicing software. And we'll click Next. And it looks like it's taken a minute again. Okay, these are some uh, default machine settings. Uh, you don't actually need to worry about those. You can click next. I had already clicked next, so it, it went past them. Um, you don't need to change any of those for now. Um, that's more advanced more advanced stuff. If you'd like to create an account uh, for, Alta, for Altamaker, you're welcome to, but I don't, I don't bother. Okay, and now here we are in uh, Altamaker Cura, the slicing software, and this is the place where we will import our 3D files and slice them, turn them into machine code that our 3D printer can understand. I'm gonna do a separate video about that uh, with some instructions. And so uh, look for that in the feed, all right? Oh, and also this whole process of uh, installing Cura on your Chromebook, it's a little, it's a little tricky and it requires uh, precise attention to detail. Um, if you wind up in trouble, uh, just hit me up on the um, on Slack channel, on the technical support channel, and we'll see what we can do. A couple more important notes on uh, on using Cura. Okay, so the first is uh, that we want to pin this uh, terminal to our to our. Um, oh, it's already pinned. Okay, so you want to make sure that you click on this, uh, right right click on this, and click pin so that it stays here so that you can always go get your terminal because that's how you're gonna launch Cura. Uh, we'll do that once at the end here. Um, and uh, one th important thing to note is that some of the, some of the uh, windows in Cura are a little funky. So like if I go to open a file. Okay, so if I go to open a file, um, I get this window and it looks fine right now, but if you'll see if I click on things, it starts to get kind of messed up. So there, I'm gonna look into see if I can, uh, I think there may be a setting where I can uh, fix this. But for now, basically, if you just know that your computer is here and your home folder is here, and if you click your home folder and then you can click somewhere here, like you can sort of manage to navigate. And so say I find this, I can double click. Now I'm in the font config folder. If I found something I wanted to open, I could hover over the open. Um, there's not actually any files in here that I can open, so it won't let me. But if you hover over this, it'll show you the open dialog or the open button. Um, and you can see it's showing me the cancel. Actually, let's see what happens if I go all Yeah, 
it's not going to let me. Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to hit cancel. But a lot of the dialog boxes that interact with the system basically open and save. Those are basically the two dialog boxes you'll use. Are a little funky to navigate. Um, I think you'll I think you'll be able to figure it out. Uh, it's a little little problem solving hurdle to jump over, but uh, that's that's the file uh, dialog boxes are a little weird. Um, I think most of these are okay. Take a look. Yeah, the internal, I think the internal dialog boxes are okay. Uh, they take a little while to load. Yeah, they take a while to load, but uh, but they do seem to work. Yeah, and once they're loaded, I think they won't take as long to load. Yeah, they, they did, there's just a rendering. It's just a rendering problem. You can see how those sort of appear as they go up. Um, you may or may not have to go in there and use this, but um, if you do, just be patient. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and quit this, and we'll go back to the terminal. Um, if you want to close a terminal, you can always just close it here, or if you want to be fancy, you can type exit and it'll close down. Now, because I have my terminal pinned down here, if I want to run Cura, all I have to do is open up the terminal. Looks like you lost my video, but that's okay. And I'm going to do, if you remember, dot slash, dot slash, cu, and then tab. And there's, there's my Cura app image and it's loading. It's going to take a, it's going to take a minute, but it's loading. Um, I think one of the reasons it takes a while is probably because of the screen recorder is using a lot of system resources also. So, um, so that's loading. It'll take some time. I'm not going to worry about letting it load. Um, actually, if you want to ever cancel something, it's a good good demonstration. If you ever want to cancel anything, you can hit Control C when you're in the terminal, and boom, it kills it. Um, probably not a great idea to use that kill process very often, but if you need it, it's there. Okay, that's that.